Australians all let us ring Joyce because she is young and free, said Kenny in his rendition of the National Anthem. That is the event that I want to play the National Anthem at at the start each day. It's the Daiwa Brim Australian Open, and we have got that event coming up next week. And tonight we have got a show which talks all about all things Daiwa Australian Open, and it's an event that's been going on since the early 2000s, initially on Sydney Harbour, but more recently on the Hawkesbury River as well. Three-day event, some of the best brim fisheries in the country, and it's evolved to an event where it's an individual event where it's the boater versus the brim. Um, 100% payback. These guys fishing for 5000 bucks next week. 100% um, payback, which means that if we have you know, 50 teams at 500 bucks each, there's $25,000 in the prize pool to give away. But it's an event because it's boaters only that can involve you as well. If you're a Sydney person, you want to come out and be an observer on a boat for a day, you can do that. You can help us gather the footage that we use in our coverage of the event. You can, uh, you can be the person that says, yep, the boater caught them all the right way and everything was above board. And of course, because we've got a great naming sponsor, Dialer, the observers get really cool packs. Like here's a, a pack, four packs of bait junkie plastics, uh, bait wallet, uh, braid scissors, etc. Every observer that's going to come and help us out at the Dollar Brim Australian Open gets one of those packs. So you can be a part of that event, whether you're a spectator watching from afar. We have awesome coverage on day three of the event. We're going to talk to Simon Goldsmith about that a bit later tonight. Um, if you're a competitor, you can come and fish the event and enjoy the fishery firsthand. If you're an observer, you can come and sit on a boat and enjoy it firsthand. And uh, if you if you want to just watch it, watch the live coverage. It's all run on the ABT Tournament Series app, which means for all of the three days, you can watch the fish as they come in. If you've got a favourite angler, a friend, a family member fishing, you can follow it live each day. Of course, with the ABT Tournament Series app, which means the guys catch the fish, take a photo of it on the ruler, length, weight, curve, converts into all weight, and they let that fish go at the point of capture. So it's uh, it's good for the fish as well. Three-day event. The first day happens on Sydney Harbour. The second day happens up on the Hawkesbury River. And then the final day, and the final day is when all of the, the weird stuff always happens. It happens back on Sydney Harbour again. So uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, next week, the event's happening. We've got some talent lined up tonight to talk all things Australian Open. Tonight we're going to talk firstly to a fan. We're going to talk to Adriano Tozzolini about his experiences both observing but then watching the Australian Open and how he likes watching the event. Um, the live scoreboards, the live streams, the live coverage. Uh, next we have Simon Goldsmith. He is the voice of the Australian Open. Been running these events since the early 2000s. Retired from ABT nowadays, but has a real interest and a real depth of knowledge when it comes to covering the Australian Open. He's going to talk about the epic coverage we have planned for day three of that event, which is when we add that sort of curated live coverage to the event itself. Um, next, we have the observer that everyone wants. We've got Rashida Moon. He's got a great story about, uh, about how he filmed Nick Colaturis' winning fish last year and an experience that matched up to a few years before for him. And, of course, his other claim to fame, Rashid, he won the Berkeley Super Series on the Hawkesbury on the weekend. So it proves that uh, you can go out, learn how to do it, and roll that out in your own fishing. Um, what would an Australian Open show be recently without Jamie McEwen? He's been on both ends of the stick. He narrowly beat Ross Cantazaro to win the Australian Open, then was narrowly knocked off last iteration of the event by Mick Colatura. So we talked to Jamie about the pros and cons of fishing the event on the app and how that affects his fishing and it affects the strategy for the tournament. Of course, it's not just drop a bag of fish on the scales at the end of the day. There is strategy involved through this event. Um, and last but definitely not least, we have Greg Seto, high up the management tree at Daiwa nowadays, but he is a previous Australian Open competitor, and he's led the event before. His brother Ian, of course, two-time winner of the event. Um, we have a look at how the Australian Open dovetails in with uh, fish monitoring, publicity of fishing, exposing fishing to the masses, and how brim fishing for Daiwa is a pretty important part of their business this year. Of course, they make specialised brim gear just for Australia. We don't get the leftovers anymore. Um, so let's talk to all those guys. We're going to go watch a few segments, see a few ads. I'm going to come back to you at the end of this show and uh, no prizes tonight. Just going to have a bit of a roundup and give you some specific dates where you can follow the Daiwa Brim Australian Open. Hope you enjoy.
what lies beneath can no longer hide. New Mega Imaging Plus uses high-frequency sonar to show you fish and structure up to 200 feet below your boat and 200 feet out to either side. No more secrets, no more guesswork, just a clearer picture of the world below, down to a fish's species and direction. Because more detail means more of this. Only from Humminbird. So let me introduce uh, what I think is one of ABT's biggest fishing fans, Adriano Tozzolini from Sydney, mate. How are you? Good, mate. Uh, pumped for the Open, which is in a, in a few days now, really, isn't it? Oh, it is. It's, uh, yeah, it's happening only next week. And, and I reckon I first met you when you were my observer for one of the days of the Open and we went up Middle Harbour. And I think the only person that froths more about top water fish on Event Meadow than me is you. Yeah, pretty much. Um, that's half the reason I became on your boat. So, yeah, it lived <laughs> up to every um, it lived up to every uh, anticipation I had for that event. After watching the um, the prior the year prior when Adam Costa was observing, yeah, and um, that just got me hooked. So, <laughs> so as part of the um, the ABT special on the uh, Daiwa Australian Brim Open tonight, we're talking to everyone involved. You know, we've we've got you know, observers there. We've got uh, guys like yourself who are fishing fans, anglers, commentators, sponsors. I really want to dig into a little bit about about how Australian fishing fans are consuming the content that ABT creates. And we always like to pride the open. And, and last year, we, we probably bit off a little bit more than we can chew because we tried for three days of curated coverage. Um, I'm assuming that you uh, that you enjoyed uh, getting snippets of, uh, of that coverage as it was happening on the water for the open last year each day. Absolutely. I mean, you know, as you know, I'm a bit of a brim tragic and um, comp fishing obviously is a different element and just provides, you know, a total awesome atmosphere, excitement, and um, it's just awesome to, to see how it all pans out, especially in your local waterways because you can learn a lot from it as well. And um, yeah, I just I just love it. I just love watching it. Now it's let's like have a little bit of a yeah. look at the the history of how you used to be able to follow ABT events. You know, twenty years ago when we started it, it was one hundred percent. You had to wait till the magazine came out, basically, and you could read the story in the print magazine back in the day. Now, in about two thousand and four, we introduced our first websites, and then the day after the tournament, you could go and get the results off the website. A little bit of a report that was you know cutting edge at the time. Um, move forward, and about twenty. I reckon it was in the 20 teens somewhere, maybe at 2010 to 2013, we got involved in some live streaming technology and we started to live stream some of our weigh-ins and it was it was pretty agricultural. It was a camera pointed at the the weigh-in and you could watch that weigh-in uh, in an embedded window on uh, on one of our websites. Move forward a few years again and we started uh, we started doing some live streaming on boats. That was about 2016, 2017. So you could follow some of the anglers. Um, but recently now, we've got weigh-ins where, and you've probably seen them on each side of the screen, the results are embedded there and it really puts into context what's happening in the weigh-in for a day. Last thing that we've done and something we did at the Open last year was we've run the whole tournament on the app and what that gives you as a fan is all day access to how the guys are going on the water. How, how have you enjoyed that, the increase in access to the anglers that are on the water? Oh, I just... It, it enables you just to keep up to date with what's going on to the minute. And um, basically you don't have to wait till the, till the way until the end of the day to find out exactly how the day panned out. So you can, it, you pretty much feel really involved in the, um, in, in the broadcast and the actual event. So uh, I just, yeah, it's just really, really awesome to be part of. And um, I think, yeah, it's just um, the way of the future, I think. I think you're, you're hitting the nail on the head with, with the coverage the way it is currently. Tell us about um, tell us about how how you watch it. You know, obviously it's a work day. We run the Australian Open during the weekdays. Um, I know that when the cricket's on, I always have a sneaky little score window up in the top right corner of my screen, and I can see you know when people lose wickets and stuff like that. Is is that how is that how you keep an eye on the scoreboards of the Open? How do you do it as a because um, I'm never watching from the sidelines. How does a how does a fan do it? Well, basically, yeah, you just you have it. Well, you just got it on the on your phone, so it's at your, at your fingertips. So, any time that you you want to see what's going on, you just have a quick look, and it's there right in front of you. And it updates regularly as well, which is is impressive. And um, yep. yeah, you keep right up to date with what's going on. And and not only that, you've got the um 
the live stream going on as well. So you can you can actually look at both and um, you can miss out. Um, I, I suppose I've been live streaming the boat for a few years now and I find that having the scoreboard available to people gives my live stream a bit of context. You know, it's, I haven't been able to work out a technology yet where I can have embedded in the live stream what the score is. I've worked out how to put some graphics on. For a while, we even had sounder embeds going on. But I, I like the fact that uh, I, I can read the chats at the end of the day on the live chat. And you know, pe the question people ask the most is how many fish have you got? Well, now at least we've got a way to say, go and check the scoreboard. And you can see how not only I'm going, but how any of your favourite you know, fishermen you like following are going. It's, uh, do, you have that, do you have to have multiple tabs open to do, to do all that at once? Well... No, not not with the um with the app now you just pretty much check it check that check it as it is and um yeah it's pretty much all all the information is there for you yeah, yeah but um I, I know what you're talking about with the, with your live stream in the past how you'd put it on but yeah you wouldn't know exactly where you're at or you know if you if you actually had caught any fish at all unless you've been watching yeah. it from the start but um that's right yeah, the way it is now right. it's just yeah yeah so basically if you're at work and you obviously you don't have much time in your hands to to, to see what's going on, it, the information you can get it in a minute, and it's all there. So, you know, if, you, if you're addicted like I am, it's um, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Now you're obviously a big Carl Jockinson fan as well, and of course at ABT we always want the functionality of what Bassmaster spends millions of dollars doing, but we want to do it on the budget we have, which is like a millionth of their budget. Um, as a, as a fan, what what would your wish list be if you know in future coverage of the Open, what would you love to see? And I know that you're going to say well, the same as Bassmaster Live, but but let's let's evolve this. What would be the next thing which you'd like us to be able to do? Well, if, well if not even with Bassmaster. I mean, I remember, you know, the AFC days. That brought that alone is was all, like with you know when you had the choppers in the sky, you had Voider in the chopper, and then you had the guys on the ground. And I mean that that was that was really cool. I mean, obviously, with the coverage that Bassmaster has. I mean, that's obviously the pinnacle. And um, if you could take anything from that, I'd, I'd love to have the, you know, the split screen, um, especially on, on the Championship Sunday, you know, the top, say, maybe top three anglers, you'd say, for the Oz Open. Yep. Uh, so you just const they're just constantly uh, on the screen. And um, especially if it's, if it's a close one, and, and that, would just, that, would, that would really be epic. I mean, for example, like last year's Open, who was it? McEwen and Colaturis when they were going head to head. I mean, yep. if you had both of those guys on the screen um, going head to head like they did last year, that would have been awesome to see. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. But um, yeah, seeing, seeing, seeing Colaturis take it out there in the end was pretty epic to see it all on film live. That was amazing. Yeah. Oh, I agree but, with yeah, that. Yeah, not I so much to see McEwen. Yeah, I, I would love to have seen Jamie's reaction when he found out about that fish bit caught. Yeah, especially when he was going through the rough time with the spearrows around his around his reef. <laughs> yep. No, it was ha happy times. Look, the, the the good news is, I reckon the technology. So that, and I'm aware of how difficult it is to live stream from your boat, the cost and the and the maintenance of it. Every year it gets easier, the picture gets better, and it gets and you know. Hopefully in a few years, we've got a few kits that we can just strap on a boat. The anglers can just hit a button and we can watch that curated stream. It's closer now than it's ever been before. So for the fans' sake, hope uh, hope we can get something cracking for you soon. Mate, thanks very much for uh, for supporting ABT. I know you're not always at events, but we can always count on you being in the background, being a fan for ABT Live and for the uh, and for the events, mate. Uh, let's hope the Open is a top water fest and it's all your boxes. Absolutely, mate. It's a pleasure, and I love following what you're doing. And um, good luck to all, all the anglers in the open coming up. Thanks for joining us. have the chance for showers or thunderstorms and also little disturbances rumbling along this thing will bring us a chance for rain.
So Australian Open fans, this is the face of the Daiwa Australian Open. Simon Goldsmith, how the hell did we suck you into doing this gig again, albeit only for one day? Hello, well, mate. Um, well, I suppose it comes down to I'm a tournament junkie. I live for this stuff. It's um, I can't stay away. And the Australian Open in particular, you know, you win that awesome Greg Lee Memorial Trophy. It's that bronze brim that weighs much heavier than you think it weighs. It's just had such a, a uh, an interesting history, you know. It started off as a team's event back in the year and you've got names like, you know, Scotty Towner on it and, you know, Johnny Balcom and Ben Godfrey and guys that have gone off to do things in the industry. Timmy and I won it one year. But then in the early teens, it turned to that individual event and it's, migrated to this event where, that really encapsulates the who shares wins of ABT because that observer aspect makes it so interesting. Absolutely. Um, you know, as you mentioned in the early days, it was a, it was a teams event and, and teams events were, you know, they were a big part of our business in the early days, back in the early noughties. Yeah. Um, and, and then, you know, you know ABT was a, very much a trendsetter and we set the trend by going, let's make it different, you know, and we made it a, a, a boater only event with observers and, we upped the ante when it came to the coverage of the event, and we did that again last year. And, and um, it's an event that just goes from strength to strength. Mate, I really, uh, having gone back and watched a lot of that live coverage, like we probably bit off a little bit more than we could chew because especially trying to do it on a, an arena which had patchy service like the Hawkesbury, mate, well done on such a good padding job for a lot of the times we couldn't get in touch with a lot of the anglers. But, but let's just run through the final hour of coverage of the Open could we have written a better script for it? No, absolutely not. Um, you know, Steve, you, you've been observing tournaments for a long time and, and similarly so have I. You could see something special was potentially going to happen. Um, and I remember we were we had crossed to Michael, who, of course, won the events, and he needed to move spots. And I'm like, the, the tournament's potentially on a knife edge here. And I'm like, I think we might stay with this guy because something might happen. And that's exactly what went down. It's You couldn't write a better script than that. It, it was nail-biting, edge-of-the-seat stuff. It was awesome. Yep. And I think that, um, you know, possibly, you know, your good instincts kept on the shot. But uh, also I think we were best blessed with a fair bit of luck to, you know, have everything working on the boat at the time. And uh, we just only talked to Rashid a little bit earlier in the show tonight. And uh, he was uh, he was a part of that process and, and very excited really felt like a member of the team to do it and what a great story that Rashid told about the fact that when he was observing two years earlier he was on boat with Ross Canizaro guess what boat Ross Canizaro caught his kicker fish that he thought won the open on guess what boat it was it was the same boat wasn't it the identical boat in Iron Cove but and the different outcomes you know Ross lost it by a fly shit um, Michael won it by a fly shit. It, mate, it's all those it's all those swings and roundabouts which make tournament fishing so unpredictable, and and it's I suppose such a difficult event to cover. You know, we're lucky that we've got someone of your experience to sit there. I know that the upcoming Open will have you and Nicole sitting there, um, curating three days worth of highlights coming in from the uh, from the observers that are out there, encapsulating two magnificent brim arenas in Sydney Harbour and the Hawkesbury. I just, I just got the feeling again that it's going to always come down to the why of the Open. There never is the Open won by a two kilo blowout by anyone. Well, well, how many times have we seen it? You know, I think there was a tournament there with you and Chris Hickson, and and the difference between first and second was ten grams. The scales only went down to ten grams. So, and then you had Michael last year, and there'd been other events. It's just two venues and a tournament that just gives you those nail biting finishes year after year. I, I, it must be something about the water. Yep, yeah, and, and you know what? The, the cool thing is, like, we go to places like Gippsland Lakes, and you know at Gippsland Lakes there's probably half a dozen different locations you know the tournament's going to be won at. Man, Sydney Harbour, if we go back over the years, you know, Franco's won it in Iron Cove. It's been won right up the Parramatta River before. Jamie's won it down on the Sow and Pigs Reef. I've won it up in Middle Harbour. Lots of people have won it in that stretch between Rose Bay and Gladesville, you know, that middle harbour section. And every single part of Sydney Harbour and every single part of the Hawkesbury River have the potential to kick out that winning bag. And it's the person who makes the best decisions and rides their luck the best on the day ends up winning it. That's that's the thing for me and for a lot of the competitors that make it such an exciting event. Oh, absolutely. You know, the two great fisheries, Hawkesbury and, and, and the harbour, 
they're large, they're very diverse, you, you, you don't know what you're going to get. And like you say, it hasn't just been one and the same spot year after year or the same technique. Um, it, you know, if somebody gets away in the first two days, doesn't mean they're going to win it on the last day. You can get run down in that last two hours, which is what we saw last year. Yep. You know, I remember Wayne Reed bringing back a six kilo bag on the last day to to, yep. to come from nowhere, and 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 you know, it's it's a nail biting event, and you just never know what you're going to get until right to the very end of that last day, that third day, and and that in itself is a big thing. Is the guys don't always get the fish three day tournaments. You know, two different venues now, three days. Yep, it's it's a marathon tournament to fish. Let's uh, let's delve into a bit of the history of uh, Bing Lee in the event. They were a great sponsor in the in the mid two thousands when uh, when Greg Lee was alive. Of course, that big trophy now it's called the Greg Lee Memorial Trophy, and you and I both remember how he came from tenth place with an over five kilo bag in Iron Cove to take the win one year. That's that's a phenomenal effort to jump ten places amongst such a quality field with a massive bag on the last day. You know, Greg and Pat just came from nowhere and that's typical of the open anything mm. can happen and, and, that, and that was a great year that was very much when you know mango and scotty were at the peak in teams events you know if they turned up they pretty much won the tournament and and i think they may have been defending champions and they're pretty much expected to walk away with that event and, and pat and greg go and get that huge bag uh, off boat holes, I think was it yep. up the Lane yep. Covered River? I think they yep. got them. Lane Boom, Covered. from ten to one, and then they win the tournament. It's like, well, <laughs> you didn't know that was going to happen. Although we have this thing called sponsor karma, so you can explain it at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have seen sponsor karma a lot of times over the years, haven't we? Um, just finally, before I let you go, um, tell us your excitement level coming into just having to, you know, you're not going to have to pad much because. You've got one day of coverage. It's the last day of the Open. You're going to have a lot of background building up over the, the last couple of days. I want, I want a bit of a pick from you about what technique is going, to, is going to do well this year. And I'll tell you the forecast for Sydney for the next week. They reckon it's going to be fairly wet for the next week. So, okay. so give, us a, give us a one week out bit of a prediction on uh, what you're going to be talking about on the final day next week with all your experience. I always find Sydney Harbour at its most exciting when there has been a fair bit of rain and you get that that dirty water and those nutrients get flushed in and and it really tends to get those fish those especially those bigger fish because it can be quite a clear water fishery yep. it dirties it up a bit and those big those big harbor fish become probably a little bit less reserved than what they are um so the words you're looking for More yeah stupid. yeah <laughs> they get stupid and hungry and willing to eat baits which is yep. what tournament anglers want um, so if we get that that rain, that's probably something that I'll be looking out for. Um, Lure-wise, geez, it's hard to go against cranker crabs. They do so incredibly well. Um, and the ABT Brim Tournament says life before cranker crabs and then there's life after cranker crabs. Um, and, you know, so I'd expect crankers to do pretty well. Those rocky spots, you know, I remember the first open we had in 04. We had a really big subway change come through on that on that last night. Um, Scotty won fishing down at uh, was it Goat Highlands? Yeah, down um, in the bridge. Yeah. yeah, fishing really rough water down there. So you know, I'd expect rocky headlands. Those inflows from the drains and stuff will uh, will produce. Um, and and you know, it, it's not left a field, but I expect cranky crabs to do quite well. There you go. So uh, let's see if you're going to be eating your words next week. All I know is the Australian Open is going to throw up uh, throw up challenges and different changes every day. So uh, let's fingers crossed. We're going to have a good Open this year. And thank you very much for coming and helping out with the coverage. My pleasure, mate. Can't wait to uh, bring on Sydney Harbour and Hall Street. Maui Jim sunglasses were born on the beaches of Hawaii, designed to respond to the bright sun and harsh glare of the islands, all while enhancing the view. After 30 years, we're still independently owned and the free-thinking Hawaiian spirit that first inspired us is still a part of everything we do. Our Polarized Plus 2 lenses not only protect eyes from harmful rays, they also make colors more vivid and contrast crisper. Try in a pair and see for yourself. The view is better from here. What are them sons of fishies up to now? Fellas, I give you the force trolling motor. It is the most powerful, the most efficient on the water. Yep. 
Most powerful. We're really in trouble now. And it's quiet, too. You can't swim here. What a dumb bass. So here he is. This is the observer in the Australian Open that if you're a boater, you want him because if there has been action happening in the Australian Open, this man is on board. Rashida Moon, welcome to ABT Live. Hi, guys. <laughs> and as an added claim to fame, you and your mate won the Berkeley Super Series on the weekend as well, didn't you, with the only five kilo bag out of the Hawkesbury. So not only are you good luck to people that you're on the mm. boat with, you've probably got a bit of good, bit of good form guide for happening this weekend for uh, the day on the Hawkesbury. Yeah, it was actually pretty good, yeah. We had a lot of luck go our way and you know, things went our way. So. Um, it's always the Australian Open used to be a team's event, but ever since we've made it an individual event in about 2014, we've always encouraged observers to come along to, uh, to one, to keep an eye on the, the boaters to make sure they're doing the right thing, but also it really fits in with ABT's motto, who shares wins. And it's an opportunity for people to come along, get on the boat with these really good brim fishermen, and learn a lot and just have a have a free day out on the water. And even recently, we're actually giving the observers lots of the, the product that we get for the weekend. So I know for last year, you came along, you observed on a few days, you get a handful of tackle, mm-hmm. and you leave with some good experiences. Am I am I wrong with this assessment of what it's like to be an observer? No, it's good as good as what I It's actually very good fun, um, enjoyable. Um, you learn a lot. Uh, you meet the anglers. So, yeah, it's actually quite good. Tell us, um, give us, give us a list of who you've been out with over the uh, couple of times you've done observing. Uh, 2019, I was with um, Chris Gates. Yep, that's day one. He had a shocker. I think he only caught one fish all day. But that's when your luck of that's when your run of luck ended for. Then it got good from there. Who are you with after that? Yeah, then day two, I was in Mark Healy in the Hawkesbury. Yep, uh, he's pretty good. Yep. Uh, then Ross Canazaro, day three. And that, and that was the year that Ross Cannizzaro came this close to winning and it was only some sneaky Queenslander that got ahead of him yeah. and we're talking to him in the, later tonight in the show. Did Ross think he – did he think he had it tied up with that you know, near five-kilo bag? Yeah, he was confident. Once he got his last upgrade, it was probably at around maybe one o'clock. Yep. Turning lane curve. Um, I think it came in roughly at around 1.4 kilo, 1.3 kilo, so it was a yep. decent fish. Um, he was quite confident. So he was um, sort of – um, confident that he was going to overtake Mark Compton. This Mark Compton was leading 800 grams ahead that day. And of course, um, Ross has won nearly everything that's got to do with Sydney Harbour, but he hasn't won an open yet, has he? Apparently, not. Yeah, I think you guys <laughs> giving it to him. Uh, one day he'll win it. Look, um, then let's fast forward to last year. Now, I don't know if any of you know this, but Rashid was the man who was behind the camera when Mick Colaturis caught his PB brim to win the Open in the last couple of hours. What was it like being on the other side of the camera just watching it all unfold? It was pretty good. Um, I got the phone call and he started to take off. And I took the call and um, we go, look, we're moving spots. So they go, they go um, let us come on with the ride. So I was actually holding the phone as we're driving. Yep. Apparently, um, Michael told me he was actually meant to go somewhere else. I then changed his mind as we're driving. Yep. And went into the Lane Cove. Yep. So we got to the Lane Cove. Um, he pulls down his Minkota. And I'm just having a look and I, I see a familiar boat. Um, it crosses my mind that this is the same boat Roscoe Nazaro got his big fish two years ago on day three. Amazing. That 1.4 kilo one. Yeah, 1.4. And I'm just thinking to myself, this is the same boat. Um, and as, as I'm thinking to myself, um, he's on. <laughs> so, and... So the fish starts to go right, then it goes back left, um, and it's all chaos, and um, it starts to go around the anchor rope of, of another boat. Yep. So I'm just trying to film and stay out of his way and move around, and we're going to hit another boat, and he manages just to hold, and you know, and then it comes up on the surface, a massive boom. So, yeah, it was pretty good. Good fun. Mate, you, you did amazingly well for an iPhone in one hand trying to stay in the boat with mm. Nick Colaturis going nuts in the boat because mm. that's what you do when it's an hour to go in the open and you're sitting in second place. Yeah. Mate, I think you did amazingly well to capture those scenes and they will be remembered for all of open history. No, it's good. I actually um, enjoyed, the, enjoyed, the, um, enjoyed the time on this boat in that particular, um, you know, filming it was pretty good too. Yeah, he's um he's a he's a very excitable guy, Mick. And he had look that started a run for him. He won the open and then he won Foster as well straight mm. afterwards. And we notice in fishing a lot when you're on a roll, 
that role keeps on going, and going. So, mate, you liked it so much. You, you've 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 taken the best footage in open history, but you signed up again for this year. You can't get enough of it. I have, um, I have. But I'm busy at work, but I'm I'm going to take time off and do it again. Mate, it's a. Uh, I think you're a testament to who, what who shares wins is all about. You've had those great experiences. You've you you are now sharing in the spoils of victory when you're fishing your own tournament. So, mm -hmm. uh, mate, I just think we might have to auction you off to see yeah. who we can get you on the boat with because you bring good luck. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. it's it's good. It's good to be part of it. Uh, you know, and being on the boat, Michael, yeah, is such a nice guy too. Yeah, so seeing him win, you know, it's just quite good. Mate, you were part of the team. Thanks very much for taking the time to join us on ABT Live tonight, and we're going to see you in about a week's time. Yep, no problem. We'll do. Thank you. So here he is, the second most famous man from the Australian Open in 2021, uh, previous Oz Open champion, Jamie McEwen. Welcome to ABT Live, mate. I'm, I'm sure you are itching to get to a tournament this year, having missed out on Victoria. Yeah, mate. Yeah, I, um, it's, 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 it feels like the year's gone a long way already, but uh, and I haven't fished any tournaments except for one local one. And yeah, absolutely... Uh, Cannot wait to get down to Sydney and open up the ABT year with the, the Australian Open. You've uh, you've got rid of, rid of the old rig that had all the mojo in it, that you won two events in last year. You've won Queensland Opens in it, uh, Australian Opens in it. Uh, and you've upgraded to a, a new rig. Tell us a little bit about the new rig. Yeah, mate, I bought a, um, a Skeeter ZX 250, and so a big uh, 21-footer with a 250 Yammy on it. So, um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's all rigged and put... Uh, Put all my sort of touches on it that like how I like things and um, yep. running some new electronics and all that sort of thing. So yeah, mate, it's um, it's ready to go in the shed, just well, uh, purring. Thank God you're not going to win like a third Mercury Cup in the row. That's, that's <laughs> fine. Leave that to us Mercury owners. But uh, give us an example of a couple of the you know when you talk about personalising your boat. Give us a couple of examples of stuff you do to it to make it uh, Jamie McEwen friendly. Mate, with tournament fishing for me, it's all about uh, you know more time in the in the water with your lures is is uh really important so when you have to go digging through your boat and looking for things and not knowing where things are and i already have an idea on on you know each tournament i go into on how i want to fish or where i want to fish and what lures i'll use most so i'll have them one sort of in my handy tray um and sort of they're ready to go so yeah i, I make sure all that sort of stuff's in in place and it's a little bit OCDC, whatever you call it, with with boats for me, mate. But it's um, yeah, I like to have things in certain places, and things have all got to be uh, got to be right, so I'm feeling good about things. So yeah, I do that, and I do a couple of you know, I have uh, have some little holders in the live world for the um for the culling tags and and just things like that, scissors and pliers in the place where I know they are, and just they're just silly little things, but they're things where where I like them to be. The ABT yep. rule are handy and all that sort of thing. Cool. Sounds like you've had a lot of time to get ready and to mentally prepare for this event. How much did it eat you up to miss out on the uh, first couple of Victorian events, especially seeing that Malakuta was such a good top water bite, mate? I, I thought you were going to say how much did it eat me up losing last year in the Open, but um, yeah, no, uh, it well, was we'll hard. Get to that, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was uh, it was hard watching, especially I was watching you like the. Um, on the, the live feed we I was watching and you you I saw that one where you sort of tried to pull that fish in on a on two pound or whatever it was and it's just like I just went, Oh you dickhead and then yeah, mate, it was four. <laughs> and then and then then your live feed sort of dropped out when, when you started smashing them on top water and and then yeah, I saw saw you saw you sort of come back there with the the lead on day one and spoke to you that afternoon and you're like, Oh, it's a bent minnow bite and it's like, Oh, why? And I haven't been to the Malakuta for years, so yeah, no, it was it was pretty hard. Because um, last time you went to Malakuta, you you did real well on the bent. Yeah, mate. Yeah, I, I love going down there. Malakuta would probably be my oh, 
top two place to, to go and fish behind Sydney Harbour, I reckon. I reckon they're sort of on par. And Malaku just suits how, how Queenslanders fish, I reckon, go down there and throw top water. And we just sort of do the sort of think outside the box sort of thing when we go down there. So that's why sometimes we're uh, we're good down there, mate, and sometimes we absolutely suck. But it, It's uh, right. It's rooster or feather duster, isn't it, for Queenslanders yeah, in Victoria? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that, those times when you crack it, it's like yeah, you feel like you accomplish something really good when you uh, when you take a little bit of home down there and, and um, catch some big blacks down there. Let's um now let's get back onto the um, how annoyed you were to lose the open last year because it was probably the most public uh, public uh, loss of the open we've ever seen. And let's face it, you didn't lose the open. Mick Collar, Mick Collar Tourist just caught a fish of a lifetime to win the open off you. Um, when I was talking to you a week or two ago, you said, oh, thanks, ABT, for uh, organising the tides just right. And let me reassure you that um, the Open was not organised on tides. It was organised when we could fit it between Victoria and, and the Tasmanian trip. Um, take us through what the tides are going to be next week and why you like them so much. Yeah, mate, I, like, I've only ever fished Sydney three times. Um, and each time that's been in, in um, an Australian Open, the first one I, I shanked it, didn't get east of the, the bridge at all. And the second one... I won that one and then last year. So I've only really fished there the tides that we have every uh, Australian Open sort of thing. So I don't want that to change. So I'm happy with the, the early morning sort of high tides and, and the yep. run out in the, um, for the rest of the day. So no, I, I don't want to, I don't want to know what it's like in any other tide because it sort of seems to work uh, okay with the tides that we have. Now you've having done a few Australian Opens, you've done some Queensland Opens, you've done the Gladstone event before. You're probably one of the more experienced ABT anglers when it comes to the app. You know, yep. you've done the Barra Tour uh, for a couple of years. Um, you're probably you're probably comfortable with the app now because you've probably done a dozen tournaments on it. Yeah. Um, do you sit there and think, oh, if it wasn't the app, I might have won last year? What what are you, what are your feelings about the app? Oh, mate. <clears throat> Yeah, like I don't really like you know, like I don't I don't want to take anything away from from Mick or anyone that's won a, an open because they won it on a on a level playing field, you know. So I mean, for me to go, oh yeah, I would have won it if it was a weigh in. It's like that's just a, a load of you know what to me. Like we're all with the app, we're all in the level playing field, we're all catching the same fish. I mean, so be it if if you know I catch a fatter fish than someone else, or someone else catches a fatter fish than me but it doesn't really matter how fat they are it's how long they are and for guys so i know some guys say oh yeah i know where i can go and, and get you know five fish that are really long and skinny and and you know and it's like well go there go, and go get them <laughs> like like i don't know anywhere in australia where i can go oh yeah i'm just gonna go catch five long skinny fish so um yeah mate, it, it's i i uh i like the app um i like the app especially in the in the open events um I think the open events we we need to make it uh, that really high spectator um, sort of event, um, and I mean, it it just gets the the sponsors on board. It gets sponsors massive coverage, and that's what we need to to keep our uh, our sport growing. And I mean, mate, when Mick caught that fish last year, that must have you know pretty much broke the internet or ABT Live or whatever it was. We because, did break something. <laughs> mate, it, even my phone was going stupid after the event, and it's like I didn't want to talk to anyone. But um, <laughs> you know, it's uh, you know, people are, are, are know what's going on already, and and you know, you, you, your own sponsors get really good coverage, and I I think it's it's definitely um, something that that needs to to hang around, especially for those big open events that. Um, and you know, mate, it's it's one of them things. Like my my, uh, I think his name was Thomas last year. My my day three observer, he must have been well and truly had the shits with me by the time that the event was over because it was like every uh, after Mick caught that fish, it was like, oh, what's what's where am I at? Where am I at? What do I need? Sort of thing, you know. It's yeah. like can't do that at a weigh-in. So you know, yep. if, if I hadn't uh, if I hadn't have known that. Uh, what Mick had got because um, Simon rang me shortly after to, to, to break the news to me. Um, if I hadn't have known that, mate, I might have just, you know, sort of sort of uh, put it away a little bit and just sort of stuck there. And But knowing what had happened, mate, I chased really hard and I ended up pegging it back to whatever it was, 40 grams or whatever, but it wasn't good enough on the day. But, you know, you you sort of keep casting right to the last minute if you know you you got, got ground to make up and, that's the the benefits of having the um having the app. 
being someone like yourself that's often at the top of the scoreboard in the app events, and this isn't Barra, mate, this is in Brim because you're a Brim guy. I was there once. <laughs> you were you were once a Barra guy. That's, about, um, about 8 o'clock. <laughs> some, some of the people get in their mind that it's like, oh, if people see me going good on the scoreboard, then they'll come to where I'm fishing because they know. What, do you, have you noticed that? Like you've led a lot of events on the app. Do you notice people overrunning your spots as soon as you hit the lead? Uh, mate, it, like – it does happen, um, but I mean, we're getting better with with our uh, our ethics. I think. Um, I think you know, if if people want these events to work, people need to do the right thing and and not start going sort of cutting in on people's spots where they're watching, where they're fishing, and seeing that they're they're putting fish in. But um, I I have experienced a couple of times, but I mean, you know, at the end of the day, mate, I, I always say it like people can go and try and catch the fish that you're on to, but they're not just going to roll in and, and catch the fish or know what you're doing. There's, there's, there's intricate little things that guys do that, that, um, that helps them catch the fish that they're catching, whether it be up in the canals or, you know, on rock walls or bridges or anything like that. Like we've all seen it. It's, it, you can't just roll in and start catching fish. It's very uncommon for that to happen. So I mean, you know, they've got to sort of nut it out while you've already got your bag and your home and hose sort of thing. So, yeah, yeah, it's not it's not just a matter of oh yeah, he's catching fish over there. I'm going to go catch him. Um, and usually by the time they work it out, it's all over anyway. So that's it. Um, I suppose that the smarter way to answer that to ask that question and give me a one word answer: Have you ever been beaten by anyone that have seen you lead in the scoreboard and then come over and beaten you at your own game? No. <laughs> Has anyone ever got close to doing that? No. No. That's where you go. So I think it's, I think in the old days, you know, if you know where the fish were caught on day one and you go there on day two, remember you're at a day or two disadvantage, I suppose. So there's a guy that's probably practiced on them, probably smoked them on day one, and he probably knows exactly what's going on and you're just rocking in. And, and that's it, mate. Up. Like it's always harder for, for people to try and catch fish that have already been caught, that someone's already has worked out and dialed it in and, and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's, it's difficult to try and, to try and move in on someone for starters and then try and catch the same fish that they're already sort of nutted out sort of thing. So yeah, it's not easy. There you go. And, uh, and I suppose respectfully, you're not the most tech savvy phone person out there. Like you would, you wouldn't, you wouldn't win an award for pulling a phone apart and putting it back together and having it all working at the end. No, but mate. You can, you can, you know your way around the app pretty well now. What's, what's I suppose your best bit of advice for someone? Say it's going to be their first open that they fish and haven't done an app tournament before. What's a bit of advice you got for someone who, who's going to use the app for the first time? Mate, my advice would be to um, take your phone, have it charged take pictures in your gallery yep. um, and make sure you write down your catches on the piece of paper. Because if, if everything fails on the app and you can still go back to Nicole and go, here's my picture, here's the fish I caught. Um, and here's the, the, the paper that um, matches up to the catch. So, yep. Yep. I mean, yeah, just, just have those few securities in place. I always um, sort of take the picture and just sort of wait till it starts loading up if you're in, in, in good area where it can load up. Um, and then, yeah, take the, the gallery picture on top of that. And then once that's there and you're happy with it there, fish goes back, swims back. You don't have yep. to worry about keeping it alive in your live tank and upgrading and all that sort of stuff. So it's just in and out, mate, and you're good to go. Very good, mate. Uh, sage words, because I'm sure you, like me, have had a tournament where you've either miscounted your fish, had one carcass in the live well, screwed up some other way and uh and you know may, maybe the technology might save us twits from that happening occasionally yeah mate yeah yeah it's the it's i don't know how many times you hear guys that um that come back from you know i don't know whether it's tournament talk or what but you always hear the stories of oh yeah me kicker 44 could died in the well and all that sort of stuff and mate it does happen with those big fish um and then you know you you're scratching around to try and catch the the fifth fish so you don't have to worry about that when you're um, with the app. You just put him straight back and swims away nicely and you can move on to the next fish. Um, open kicks off next week. Um, you've got the two days on the harbour that we talk a lot about. Tell us about the Hawkesbury. If you if you haven't been to harbour much, I assume you've been to the Hawkesbury less. Yeah, mate. I, I actually, we did um, – I think we did – I've done a qualifier there back in like 2014 or something like that, like years ago. 
um, and I didn't leave pit water. I just, you know, it was my, it was my first time sort of around that area, and I drove out of uh, pit water, and it was just like, oh, this looks awesome, and you just start fishing everywhere and have no idea what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and then we had the grand final there that that Chris won, and I got sucked into. Um, uh, I think I was fishing washers and stuff, and you know they're they're there one minute and gone the next sort of thing, and he got sucked into that. But um, yeah, mate. I, I, and then it was just the the last sort of um, three open, so I haven't been there a great deal, but sort of worked out a bit of a bit of a pattern further up river sort of thing. So um, suits my sort of fishing. It's really slow. Um, you got to be really patient. You got to wait for the tides to be to be right and all that sort of thing. And mate, it's. Um, I know the last year, especially, and and the year before, a little bit was um, sort of you're up up that far, and you're wondering if you've if you've made the right decision, and and you sort of just scratched out sort of thing. So it's um yeah, it's a bit nerve wracking at times, but I don't really know anywhere else there, and I don't um don't want to try and reinvent the wheel, you know. Like I I'm, we're sort of handicapped a little bit with uh, with pre fish time and that sort of thing. So you just want to sort of for me, it's just confidence um and you know just wanting to do what what i sort of am comfortable with doing so that's what i sort of try and target um you know i'll i'll uh i'll always try try bent you know early in the morning around the washes and then um try and hook it up river and see what i can do up there there you go sounds like you're a man that uh you got your plan sorted out if it's your year smiling if it's not your year you're happy to die in that ditch and uh wait till it is your year yeah, mate, and that's like, it's it's one of them things. Hey, like I was thinking just the other day with opens, it's it's and grand finals. I've never won a grand final, but those those big events, it's like, it's just it's gonna happen. Like if it, if it's your time, it's gonna happen. Like, you know, Mick caught that giant fish last year on the last day, and and the year before, like I I went and fished that reef in the middle of the harbour there, and. I know um, Ross Canazaro came up to me after the first day and he said, you know, we've been driving past that reef for the last 10 or 15 years and we drove past it today and sort of had a bit of a chuckle because it was like everyone just knows it as a, a reef where you go and, and live bait kingies and stuff like that. And, you know, it was just those little things just happen for you. And, you know, it, Queensland Open was the same, you know, I beat Wally by 30 grams or something like that. And it's if it's going to be your year, it'll happen. And it's just those those one percenters that that uh everyone talks about those they, they just happen for you and you can't you can't put any sort of you know um thinking into it or or preparation into it it just sort of falls into place i think they have a saying in the states to say you can't make it happen and then you also can't stop it from happening when it's going yeah so. yeah then that's exactly right mate then, then that's you know there was probably not much i could uh i could do last year when uh when Mick caught that that fish and and won the open, so it was it was his time, mate, and that's that's all that comes down to it. Same as when Franco won the grand final at uh, Swansea, it was his time, and and that's just the way it, way it is. That's it's fishing. There's not not much we can we can do other than you know prepare ourselves the best we can. Our boats be all prepared and our tackle and all that sort of stuff. And if it's going to happen, it'll happen. Well, there you go. Former Australian Open champion, nearly two time in a row, Oz Open champion, Jamie McEwen sounds like he is prepared and ready to go this year. Watch out because he is a man on a mission. Thanks for joining us tonight, Jamie. Thanks, mate. So it's not often we get uh, we go sort of straight to the top at ABT Live, but here he is, Greg Cedo. Check it history, mate. You've been an Oz Open competitor, but now you're up uh, upstairs at Daiwa there. And, uh, and you're in a capacity, I suppose, as naming sponsor of the event. I wanted to grab you tonight and just let's have a chat about the Open, mate. It's, it's been such a, a long checkered history with your family and with the brand Iowa. Definitely a um, checkered history, Steve. Uh, I think that I can recount that I choked from second place twice on the last day to uh, fall well down the leaderboard. Yep. Uh, yet, um, you know, uh, my brother, Ian, managed to have lightning strike twice and he won twice the Australian Open, I think uh, two consecutive Opens. That's right. And it's it's funny like that, you know, we always think of the situations that are, you know, will be rare to happen. You know, someone win it two years in a row or the same spot playing, you know, different times. But it seems to always happen in the Open. And I talked to Simon about it in another part of the show. It's We can't write a script as good as what happens in the Open in real life. Look, I think it's one of the premier, if not the premier event 
on the calendar. Um, I haven't fished uh, an AB tournament in probably close to eight or nine years now, but I, I, I guess I would say to you, I have very, very fond memories of fishing the open and it was always the event on the calendar that uh, I made sure that I was around to fish. I suppose from our point of view, it's, you know, the Open is more like a test match than a one day or a 2020. It's, you, we always say you can never win the Open in a day, but you can definitely lose it in a day. If you have a bad session, it's hard to come back from and that three day mm. format. But back when you were fishing, it was three days on the harbour, which made it a little bit even more difficult because you'd wear spots out and you always had a saying you couldn't fish the same spot for three days in a row and win the three day open on the harbour. But we've got the added complexity now of the Hawkesbury River on the middle day, which actually rests some of the harbour spots. Um, you know, if you were fishing the open nowadays, uh, which of the two arenas would you relish fishing? Oh, obviously the harbour, it's my backyard, but um... I think that if I'm very honest with myself, uh, I don't think that uh, I'd be able to compete with, uh, with with the anglers that have come through in the last few years. I think back when I was fishing at a 2.8 kilo average bag across three three days or a three kilo average bag across three days was was almost enough to guarantee that you'd be up there uh, in, in the rankings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I suspect that that's not the case anymore. Oh, look, it's, yeah, if back in the day, if you weighed over three kilos a day, you could pretty much put your hand on some money and that three and a half kilo mark was the, you might take a trophy home, but I think we've had weights as heavy up to 13 and a half kilos for 10 fish, so, oh, for 15 fish, so it's, yeah. you know, that, that eight to 900 gram average now, and, and I think that's an artefact of the harbour being, you know, there's no commercial fishing there, there's not a lot of fish taken out of it because of the heavy metal pollution in there. And the fact that the guys are just getting so good at what they do now, you know, Daiwa makes a very comprehensive range now of, do of brim tackle from lures to rods to reels. And we're not just getting the leftover trout gear from the rest of the world now, are we? We're getting specially yeah. designed stuff. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, you hit the nail on the head. I think the anglers are much better at what they're doing and, and they're really honed in. <clears throat> I think that, you know, to be fair, that's probably one of the key reasons why as a brand we continue to sponsor uh, the event. Um, you know, the Daiwa vision, um, if you break it down to the most basic principles, is that, you know, we want to inspire people to go fishing. You know, our core pillars are to to inspire, to influence and to grow. And I think that tournament fishing and particularly the Australian Open really kind of is a very focused environment that allows us to be able to do that. I think um, your influence in the Open, you're correct because I remember last year on the last day when stuff started to get real, the, the number of connections and people trying to look at that live scoreboard actually crashed our system for the last yeah. couple of hours to the point we had to turn the website off so that we could get access to the back end of it. We've corrected all those problems this year, but uh, but there, it's fair to say that there's not too many people that know their broom fishing that aren't intimately familiar with how that event finished last year with the come from behind finish and the live coverage. And uh, I just think as and, you know, if I was sitting in your seat as a sponsor, I'd just be licking my lips about yeah, what exciting is going to happen this year, because if it's going to happen one year in the open, it will happen. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, look, uh, you know, the, the inspire uh, and influence piece is, is really important to us. I think that it's not just uh, about inspiring anglers um, to go fishing, but it's to inspire them to remain engaged with fishing. Yep. As I said, you know, Daiwa is a brand we're focused on innovation and, and bringing, you know, innovative new products that inspire people to really kind of fall in love with and, and have those wow experiences with fishing and you know, the, the open really kind of narrows that down. Um, you know, tournament fishing, you know, people might ask, how does that relate to a broader capacity of inspiring and engaging anglers? Well, I think that, you know, for me, it's where the innovation probably starts uh, in the industry. As I said, it's a very focused group of people who are actually really dedicated to their craft and obviously very, very good at their craft. Um, it's a place that kind of inspires and fosters new ideas and techniques and, and willingness to try new things and new lures. And eventually that kind of permeates out into the broader fishing community. And that's where we see, you know, these new techniques um, uh, and, uh, and, and new 
um, tackle kind of becoming more popular. Would it be fair to say that Daiwa has got more Australian design specialised brewing gear now than you've ever had before? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I'm sure most people watching this uh, program would be familiar with Tommy Slater. And, you know, we were very, very lucky to snag him, um, what, almost five years ago now to, to come on board with Dyra. And he's our head of product development. And, you know, he's a very passionate angler himself. And um, he's been instrumental in, in ensuring that we are bringing innovative new brim gear to, to the market. Well, there you go. And he is out there repping the gear himself. He will be one of the anglers fishing the Open next week. Oh, he's definitely that. one that uh, that walks the walk. That's it. And uh, just quietly, does do the office have a bit of a pot going on uh, who's going to do what? Do you have, like, the, the Open sweepstakes or something? Well, I think there was a pot going on whether or not I was going to come out of retirement this year, but uh, unfortunately the answer is no. <laughs> no, come on, mate. You don't see a butcher buying meat, and you would see Greg Cedar probably with the latest exist uh, pimping some of the greatest uh, lures a dog, mate. Well, I, I have to say I'm quite embarrassed about that. So I think uh, I've still got reels that I was using 10 years ago, uh, probably with the same fluoro line on them. So, Mate, it all still works. It's good. I, I know that uh, it was only last year, Tommy... He took all of my old was off me. He said, Morgan, you're not using those 10 year old ones anymore. You've got to use current stuff. So uh, I reluctantly well, put them on the shelf. <laughs> it's, a, it's a testament to, um, I guess, the quality of the, of the gear. It's not only innovative and full of, you know, great technology, but, you know, it's robust and, uh, and durable as well. And, you know, I think that that's a balance that we're looking for uh, in our product. Greg, thanks for taking the time this evening to have a chat to us. And on behalf of all of the anglers and all of the spectators of the Open, it takes the three-way thing to make it happen. It takes the anglers to fish it and take their time to do it. Thank you to all of the spectators who watch it because there are literally thousands and thousands of them. And thanks to you guys for uh, writing a cheque to make it all happen. It's, uh, it's a match made in heaven. Definitely is, Steve, and I think uh, your model, motto of who shares wins uh, definitely resonates with that core vision of Daiwa, so we're very, very pleased to be involved. We'll see you in Sydney next week. Cheers, mate. So there you go. That is all of the good oil from every single angle that we can think of about the Daiwa Brim Australian Open happening next week. Remember, all of the coverage hubs on our website, www.abt.org.au. And you've still got a day to sign up if you want to be an observer for the comp. And you've still got till the end of the week to sign up if you want to be a competitor in the comp. Both of those things are hubbed on the website. There is a page there, a little tab under Brim, Daiwa Brim Australian Open. You can do the electronic form to sign up for observing. Observing costs nothing. You can do one, two, or all three of the days. Just let us know which days you want to do, um, and we will help get you involved with the observing and that coverage. If you're a competitor, the entry forms are there. $550 entry fee. Pay your money. Take your chances. No other requirements. Um, it's an open event. You can go and do it. Um, I think that's it from us tonight. I am going to go and start packing some tackle. Uh, Nicole Smith behind the scenes, thank you for putting this uh, show together and thank you for being tournament director for this event. She is the one who makes all the difficult decisions, puts all the thrish through the app and is the TD for this event. Anyone at the event will know Nicole. Um, that's it from the ABT team. We are going to clean up this pigsty. We're going to pack it all in the bands and get ready to go to the open, go to Tassie. We've got a whole lot of brim fishing coverage coming your way.